essentially the math in the lesson is perimeter. So that's why we start with the video. Any questions, boys and girls? Why yeah. did you show us this video? Okay, so his question is, why are we watching this? Yes. Why was the dog going in circles? Okay. So, why was the dog going in circles? The less you can say before you start, the better, because they just jump in. And they're really not sure what it's about because it's not related to this chapter or that chapter. It's an introduction to something oh, okay. new. Okay, he wants to know where. So I'll just put that up here. Where did this happen? Thank you. You know, well, here's yeah. a video and here's a situation. And let's figure out what, you know, we need to do to figure out this, this question. I have a question I'd like you to answer. I want you to read it to yourself without talking. Read it in your head. And everyone read it out loud. Go. What is the distance around the pool? Thank you. Jose, can you read that for everybody? What is the distance around the pool? Yes, thank you. So I want you to think about the distance around that pool. We saw the dog walking around the pool, didn't we? So I want you to think, what is, that is a talented dog, and what is the distance? How, how big is it around the pool? So I want you to think, and I just want you to write your answer on your whiteboard. And then you can whisper your answer to your table mates, right? Your friends at your table. And usually the kids don't hesitate to guess because, well, we don't have any information. If you have a guess, you can share with your friends at your table. You know, you really can't be right or wrong. It's just, you know, a guess. And, it, and it's interesting as a teacher because then you think, well, what are, how are they thinking? And so one of them was thinking about inches. Do that. Can you share with me your guess? I think it's about 25 inches and three feet long. Okay, so she says it's 25 inches and three feet. And then the rest were feet, oh, and most of them were feet, so Thank then you, you have that understanding. Well, they have a good understanding that it's going to be measurement, and it's going to be some feet. kind of, you. Um, yes. you know, form, um, inches, feet, I think something it was like that. 25 feet. 25 feet? Yes, 24 feet. Excellent. Thank you for your guesses. So, boys and girls, to figure out how many feet, or what is the distance around the pool, what do we need to know? Talk with their partners. What do we need to know to figure out this question? What's really oftentimes difficult for the students to do is to figure out how to set up a problem, right? They're oftentimes um, quite good at learning how to compute and okay. once, when they have all what the information or to look through a problem and figure out Any I need this information, information and to plug it in. But for them to create the problem takes a lot more thinking, right? And uh, so that's you know what we want to encourage with this type of task is is can they create the problem? Are they going to ask me for what they need? And then, of course, I have it ready to go, you know, all the information that they need. So, boys and girls, what do we need to know? Yes, what do you think we need to know? How many times you went around the pool? Okay, he says, I need to know how many times he goes around the pool. So, that'll help you figure out the distance. Thank you. Yes. We need to know how long are the poles all together? How long are the sides? Oh, okay. He says we need to know how long. And then one little guy, you said something about, like, I need to know how many times he's going around the pool. And you just accept it. Okay. You know, and we could have found that out. And then eventually the other kids start to say, well, do we really need that? Yes. Oh, we need to see the whole pool. All right, can I draw your attention to this? In this picture, you'll notice there's, this is kind of like one side of the pool that um, one of you mentioned that we need to know that about, right? And then we need to see the whole pool, and maybe if we see the whole pool, we can figure out how many sides there are. Would that help? Yeah. Well, let's look at the next slide really quickly. Okay, so here's one side. There's like a little, I don't know, a little part here and a little part here where it's connecting what I call a rail. And how long is this rail? Five, five, five feet. Five feet. So that helps us. 
So if we watch the video again, can we figure out how many rails we have? Yes. yes, yes. Okay. So I'm going to turn on the video again and let's see how many how many rails we've got. But when I actually don't have any floats on, I don't I'm not seeing on Okay, so some of you I saw were counting, counting the rails. Do I have some guesses for rails? Yes, Mija? 18. Eight, 18? Yes. 19? 17? 17? Yeah, it was kind of hard to tell, wasn't it? Yes, Mija? 16? 20? 20? Let's find out. Okay, so there's our question. We know each rail is 5 feet, and this is how many rails there are. There's 16. Okay, so that doesn't matter if you didn't guess that, right? What we want to figure out, remember, is what is the distance around? Is there anything else you need to know? No. Okay, so we have all the information we need to figure out the distance around the pool. I'm going to give this to you so you can use this with your groups, okay? And I want you in your groups to work out the answer to our problem. All right, here we go. What we're trying to do with these anchor tasks is, you is share put that? The, the math in the real world or, or any situation in front of them and then kind of lay the math on top of it. So if, I, if I'm if i looking at this pool and I think, well, what, how big is this pool? What is the distance around? Then I need math to accomplish that. And so that's kind of what we try to create a need for math. Like the whole inches? Yeah, the whole like, distance around yeah, the pool. The distance now remember, around. we have 16 of these. And how long is each one? Five. Right, five what? Feet. Okay. So talk with your group. Explain to them what you explained to me. And see so it's agree. 80, your answer is 80 what? 80 rails. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. 80 rails. So rails tells us the distance around. I mean, 80 feet. Oh, okay. I don't know. We're going to go ahead and start sharing with each other. Because it looks like you guys are really quick to answer this. I asked this group over here to share. Sencio, could you start? Could you bring your board up here? We have the, the document camera or the Elmo ready to go. So what I found interesting about your work, Sencio, was that it looks like you drew the pool. Is that what you did there? Can you talk to us about your work? I wrote or I drew 18 lines and I pretended there are five. So I counted by fives and I got 18 feet. So, what did you get, Eagle? I it equaled 18 feet. 80? 80. 80. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's hard to be in front of the class, right? You can really validate that there are lots of ways to make sense of a problem. The way that, that the first child showed, I wanted to show that because it really showed this, the class the fact that you're adding up all the sides. And the, and the fact that it's all five, well, then we can multiply. So then it can get faster because one little guy goes, no, let's just multiply because that's much faster. And so we want to show them that math is useful, you know, and that, and if he's more comfortable adding, well, you can add. You know, eventually he would get to the point, I would imagine, and realize okay. that hey, multiplying is so faster. instead of adding um, five, 16 times, he said, you know what, when you're adding over and over again, that's the same as multiplying. So I'm just going to multiply 16 times five. And he did it using the area model, and he worked it out, and he got the answer 80 feet. Okay, so we know that our answer is 80 feet, right? But here's the next one. Read it to yourself. Read it out loud to me. Ready, go. Okay. So we know that we have a pool with a distance around that's 80 feet, and we know that it has 16 rails, and each rail is 5 feet, just like Sensio drew for us, right? 5 feet around. Can you draw a different shape of a pool? Yes. 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 Okay, show me that. See some shapes. Let's put some numbers on your shapes. Okay. Yeah, that works. Can you show me how that's 80? 
Can you show me the problem? How it becomes, how it's 80 feet? Can you do the same? Can you show me how that's 80 feet? If you draw one and you're finished, share with your group and explain to them what you did. And then if you have time, you can draw another shape. Okay, we'll just spend a few more minutes. The kids have a way of thinking that, that's, that they can communicate sometimes and understand a little bit better. So then we can take advantage of that as teachers. You know, aside from them feeling special, that they get to come up and play teacher, you know, but they also can help the class move along a little bit faster by sharing their way of thinking and attacking the problem. So thank you very much. So we have lots of different sized pools. Boys and girls, we're going to finish our lesson. Thank you very much. Can we give a round of applause for all of our friends that shared with us?